Okay, Carrie. Okay. Up? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Did you want to say something first? I can, and then and then if anybody has any questions, they can come. I've had a lot okay. of people this week. I had a lot of people this week, really the last three or four weeks, and they, and they want to change what we're doing. I don't give legal advice, so if you want to change it, change it. But let me explain what the reason I put this together. I went to the tax court first. The reason we went to the tax court first we now have a foundation. Now, for those of you that have your court order, I'm going to make a couple of statements here that I'm that people don't understand. The question is, the um, you get from the tax court that says um, the IRS does not have jurisdiction on the grounds. The question is. Who's telling you the IRS does not have jurisdiction? Okay, that's the big hook. Okay? Now, the tax court does not, I'm going to give you a hint, the tax court does not tell you the IRS does not have jurisdiction. It's the respondent. And if you look on the paperwork, the respondent is the is the commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service. So when an IRS agent says something to you, all I'm saying is, excuse me, your boss said, and then I hand it to him, because it says right on there, the respondent. The respondent is the commissioner. That's the foundation we hang everything on. Then after you get your court order, call back. And right now it's tough because they're, this crazy virus and everything is closed down. But ideally, get a certified copy. Get two or three and then copies. You're going to probably need 15 of them because they just won't, you know, then all of a sudden they go away. Then you can copy them. The certified copy will have a, a blacking signature and it will have an embossment on it. That way, if you need one, you have it. But I want to stress that one more time. The, the Internal Revenue Service's commissioner, the boss, says you never received a no stat, and we're changing to statutory, that says statutory notice of deficiency and a statutory notice of determination. Now, since the, they're saying that, why wouldn't they just give us one? Now, let me try to explain it to you this way. The reason they won't give you a statutory one is Title 26 is a statute. Title 18 is a statute and so on. So Title 26 has no implementing regulations. Therefore, there's no statutes for them to give you a statutory notice of determination or a notice of deficiency. They don't have it. They can't give it to you. Now, they can give you a piece of paper that says notice of deficiency, and they can mail it to you. See? But that does not mean it's what it says it is. First of all, what is one? Well, the statutes tell you what they are. So the statute will tell you what it is, what it looks like, how it works, and what it's supposed to be. Well, guess what? Title 26 has no implementing regulations. So without an implementing regulation, there's no statutory. They can't do one. They don't want us to know that. So that's the reason you don't get one. Even if you get one, you don't get one. Now, I hope that made sense. Now, um, if you have if you have a part beagle and a part Doberman, what do you have? You have a dog, but you don't have a beagle and you don't have a Doberman. That's the problem they're having. See? Now, the statutory notice of deficiency is the estimate. The statutory notice of determination is the is the is the um, is the amount. In other words, I'm a contractor. I go to your house and I measure a room. 
So I'm going to I'm going to give you the scenario, and I'm going to tell you how it's going to go. I'm going to measure your room. It's ten foot by ten foot. That's a hundred square feet. So you, when I show up to your house, I measure, put it on a piece of paper, and I send you a, a bill in the mail for a hundred square foot of carpet in your bedroom for six hundred and fifty dollars. If you don't give it to me, I'll take your house. The problem is number one. The notice of deficiency. No, the notice of de de the de notice of uh, deficiency is the estimate. Number one, you didn't tell me what color the carpet was, what color backing you wanted, uh, what kind of carpet, uh, or what kind of uh, uh, whether I move the carpet, the furniture or not. Then I then after I tell after you tell me that, then I give you a price, seven hundred and fifty dollars. What this includes is a back taking the moldings off or putting them on or not, whether I jam them or not, whether I put the uh, uh, padding down, whether you waterproof padding, whether you want cut loop, whether you want shag, whether you want uh, wool carpet, a nylon, whether you want polyester. In other words, I'm going to charge you for something, number one, that I never did an estimate on. Number two, you don't know what I'm putting down. And number three, you don't know how much it is. Yet I'm going to bill you for it, and then I'm going to tell you if you don't pay me, I'm taking your house. There lies the problem. Number one, they cannot give you a notice of deficiency. Why? There's no statute. There's no. There's no regulations. There's no implementing regulations for Title Twenty Six. So there's no implementing regulations. So what there's what what I'm basically saying is I'm going to put a hundred square feet of carpet in your house and you're going to pay me seven hundred and fifty dollars for it. You're going to say what room? Don't worry about it. Where is it going to go? Don't care. What color? Not going to tell you. What kind of backing? I don't know. That's the, that's what they're up against. So if we keep our if we keep our heads instead of asking so many questions, you can ask all the questions you want. But where the problem comes, now the court's catching on what we're doing. They're coming back and they're saying all kinds of crazy stuff to you. Let me explain it to you again. You have one argument. You never received a statutory notice of deficiency. I never received a statutory notice of determination. So they come back and they'll say, well, we don't have jurisdiction. Or, or the um, the uh, commissioner's attorneys are right saying, well, w th they don't have jurisdiction because they didn't show us, they didn't prove to us, they didn't have uh, a notice of deficiency. Okay, here's the problem. How do you prove what you don't have? For an example, if you're married, you cannot prove you're not married. You can't do it. It's impossible. Just like if you're not married, you can't prove you are married. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to make us prove to them the negative. You can't do it. They're asking us to do something that doesn't count. So the attorneys will call on the phone and basically here's the questions they'll ask. Why did you, uh, why did you go to the tax court? First thing they say is, you sons of bitches, I, want, I don't want to pay taxes. You've been screwing me for years, and, and I don't think I have to pay because I'm not, uh, I'm not the, uh, uh, hold on, I, I'm not, I, I don't work in a, re a regulated field or I don't work in a taxable in, uh, job. What you did now is you just given them, the, the, the next 10 years they can run with what you gave them. See, what, what I do is if they ask me a question, I answer the question they ask. If they want to get uh, to the end of the questions, they're going to have to ask me 15 or 20 questions or they'll, it'll never end. So when the, when the attorney calls you on the phone and says, why did you do this? Oh, I never received a, a statutory notice of deficiency. I never received a statutory notice of determination. For years 2000, whatever, 1805 to 2703. If you didn't get one, you didn't get one. So where are the problems coming is we want to show them how much we know. Me, I want to do the opposite. I want to show you how stupid I am. So the question is, who told you the IRS doesn't have jurisdiction? Who told you that? The tax court, no. 
the Commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service. Now, he, by the way, he, I looked him up. He's the janitor. No, he's not. He's the CEO. He's the big man. He's the boss man of the IRS. So when an IRS agent says, that doesn't what that says, here's my new saying. I got a new saying, and this is what I told the IRS agent the other day. I understand what you're saying. Listen to me carefully. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Then I shut my mouth and watch the look on his face or her face. See, what's happening is I'm giving them a document that tells me the IRS doesn't have jurisdiction given to me by the, uh, by the commissioner. The IRS agent wants to say, that's not what it says. What it says is the, the, uh, the uh, tax court doesn't have jurisdiction because you didn't show us your whatever. So my standard answer now is, man, I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you said that. Billy Bob IRS agent, here's the problem. Anything you say can and will be used against you. And I'm done. I never finish it. I never get it finished. They're throwing me out of their office or they're, or they're bobbing out. The other thing that I'll tell them is, is that all you have to say, because I'm going to use everything in my power, included but not limited to, a lawsuit. Now, I talked to a guy today about the lawsuit where the problem is, is they have to, the court has to have jurisdiction. So where the problem comes is every court in America, it could be worldwide, but I'm not that familiar with worldwide, every court in America, federal, state, county, traffic court, whatever, municipal, has a, they're a court of limited jurisdiction. Now, what that means is there's two jurisdictions, subject matter, which is in, in rem, and then there's personal jurisdiction, which is in personam. Now, if they don't have both of them, they have nothing. Now, herein lies the problem, if you understand this. They could get in, in rem, and the reason they could is you're in a tax court with an IRS agent. They could have it. They don't mean they do have it, but they can't get your personal jurisdiction never on the grounds. We have unleanable rights, inalienable rights, or in unleanable. They're trying to lean our rights. So where the real problem comes, the IRS wants to sue you in the United States District Court for willful failure to file. Now, I have an outline that I actually outlined, went through and outlined the uh, Title 26. Now, Title 26, it's eight inches thick. It's over 10,000 pages. And it, so, 0000, zero, zero, zero. in other words, Title 26 dash 0000, zero, zero, zero through Title 26 dash 6999. That's Title 26. There's no implementing regulations. So, 7203 is willful fair to file. 7,000 to the end, of, to the end, which is 10,000. So 7,000, 7,000 to the end. That's all Title 27. There's implementing regulations for Title 27. So if you went to jail, if you're, being, um, if you're being indicted, if the IRS is squeezing on you, if they're taking your Social Security, your retirement, trying to lean the bank, here's where the problem is. They're going to come after you for willful fair to file. That's 7203, or willful fair to file the tax return, which is 7213. Both of those are Title 27. So... That the reason taxes are, hold on, the reason taxes are voluntary because there's no implementing regulations. Now, the other weird thing that I've been trying to stress, but people haven't picked up on it, is 
you'll ask them. I'll say to them, I'll say, do you file a 1040 form? No. Then you ask them why. This is where the wheels come off. I'm going to give you all how many answers I get, but then I'm going to give you the proper answer that you should always tell them, and it will keep you from being um, hood, hoodwinkled. Okay, the question is, do you file a 1040 form? My answer is no. Why? Here's what people say. Well, I'm not in a uh, taxable, uh, uh, what do you call it, a taxable, um, I just do a blank. Okay, I'm not in a taxable field. I'm not, I'm a non-resident alien. I'm an American national. I'm not required to file. See, now, as soon as you hear yourself say, I, there's a problem because it's not about you. The real answer is, do you file in 1040 form? No. Why? Oh, because the 1040 instruction booklet tells me I can't. And then when they say something to me, I give it to them. In the 1040 instruction booklet, it tells you you cannot, under any circumstance, file a 1040. They won't allow it. So if you voluntarily do one, they'll take it because 100% of the time you're now going to be hooked on owing something that is not defined or regulated. So if you're if you filing a 1040, please do. I don't give legal advice. If you feel you need to, by all means, do so. But when they ask you, do you do one, and you say no, and then they're going to ask you why, and when you come back to it, well, because um, I'm a student. No, because I'm a mechanic. Uh, no, because I'm a painter. Or no, because I am not in a, in a taxable uh, field, or I'm not in a taxable job, or I'm not in a taxable um, uh, there's the word that they always use. Now, the answer is no, because the 1040 does not allow me to file a 1040, which I thought was kind of stupid. They give me a 1040 and a 1040 instruction booklet, and in the 1040 instruction booklet, it says you can't file it. If you file this, you're in trouble. You're in huge trouble just for filing it. Now, if somebody wants to look up the 1040 instructions, if somebody has a question, we'll, I'll show you where it says it in black and white. Now, for those of you that are interested, I have a process that can teach you the, the uh, 1040, the, the Title 26 is 10,000 pages. It's eight and a half inches thick. I can have you memorize it over a weekend if you're interested. I have a special way of doing it that you can memorize it over over uh, over a three day weekend. So if you're interested in that, let me know, and I'll kind of teach you how to do that. Now, where I'm having my problem is, I'm getting a lot of calls now that that will say, "Well, what about going back to the tax court?" And I got a order. I want to go back and and um, challenge it. Do whatever you want. I'm not giving legal advice. But what we're able to do with if the if the commissioner says. The IRS does not have jurisdiction because we violated you. We did not do what we were supposed to do. That's all I've been needing, and I've been able to get Social Security reinstated. Um, what is it? The uh, retirements restated. This week I have a guy that he got a check from the United States Treasury. He deposited it. It was a pretty, a pretty st substantial amount. The bank calls the IRS, and the IRS had sent it to us. So the bank sent them his deposit. Now, what we've done is we're going back to the bank, and the question is, why did you do that? They said, well, we have to do what the IRS says. So our question is, huh, if the, is the IRS, excuse me, is the Internal Revenue Service and the United States Treasury the same entity. We didn't say another word. They haven't gotten back to us. If they say yes, we're going to ask for proof because we don't know where it is. If they say no, they're holding the bag. Then we're going to go after the bank, make the bank replace the money 
because they're a third party with hearsay evidence and they took my money. See, we're outside of their thinking pattern. What we're trying to do is give you a new way to see this. You know, when I was a kid, they used to say, there's nine ways to skin a cat or whatever it is. I don't know how many there are. But when you go somewhere and you see somebody, they'll go squirrel hunting and they'll shoot them. One guy starts at the tail and pulls the, the skins it that way. Somebody starts at the head and pulls it that way. Somebody starts in the middle and peels it both directions. Which one's right? I don't know. All I know is it tastes good. So, so what we're trying to do here is show you some things that will help you, but not just with the IRS. See, we, the same thing goes with the state. The state will ask you, and it's better to be prepared. If, you, if your state has a, a state income tax, if you get your state book, read it. It says, it'll say in there, your state income taxes is based on the federal income tax. Well, if the federal says they didn't have jurisdiction, then how can the state have jurisdiction when they're using the same um, mechanics? To me, that seems to me like there's something wrong here. Now, for those of you that, that understand that and you have any questions, we'll be more than glad to take, them out and take your questions now. If, um, one quick question. Uh, you said that, uh, that what was the first part of your response to the bank about uh, the, are the three entities the same? Which, three enti or which entities were those? Okay. It, you, okay, let me, let me start over. You take a check from the United States Treasury. Let's say it's $100 million. We could care less the price. You deposit it. The bank is not going to give it to you, even though it's guaranteed to clear they're going to call the IRS. The IRS is going to say, no, give it to us. They're going to take the money. That, they're going to take it out of your account and send it. The problem is this guy got, let's say, $2,000 and deposited it. He had another $2,000 in his account. They called the IRS. The IRS said, clear out the account and send it to us. So the bank took the $2,000 check and the $2,000 that was in there and sent the IRS $4,000. So the only thing we can do is figure out what they did. So we wrote a letter to the bank saying, I, I had $4,000. It's gone. I don't understand. Do not, you do whatever you want. Where the biggest problem, in my opinion, are they'll write a letter and say, I know what you did. The IRS took for you to send it to me, and, and I don't owe them money. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't care about all that. I write a letter to the bank asking the bank, look, I'm supposed to have $4,000 in my account, and I got none. What, what happened? The bank will tell you, well, the IRS told us to do it. Oh, then we go back and say, the IRS told you to do it. What did they tell you? Now they're, well, they just told us. I know, but what proof do I have? In other words, you said you had something. I never got it. I want to see it. The bank will not give it to you because the chances are it was either a fax an email, or a phone call. Give me the money. So my question is, is the Internal Revenue Service and the United States Treasury the same entity? In other words, if I call your bank and say, my name is Billy Bob, give me Mary Lou's money, will they give it to me? The answer is no. Why? Because they can't give me your money. Why? I'm a third party, but yet the IRS will say, give me Billy Bob's money. They clean it out and they give it to him. No questions asked. So there's the breakdown. Where's the weak link? The weak link is the bank. So what we have to do. Now, the problem that we're having with this tactic, somebody will write a letter and say, you sons of bitches, I, the IRS, I don't owe them this money. Here's this, here's this, here's this. And they'll send them a 500-page document. You just gave all your defense away. You won't get it. So what you do is you write a letter to the bank. You have to have patience, but you'll get your money back. Now, you're going to write the bank a question. You're going to say, hi, my name is so-and-so. My account number is 1234. I'm your customer. I'm supposed to have $4,000 in there. I see a, a, a withdrawal for $4,000. I don't understand why is it gone and where is it and who got it. 
the bank, you might have to ask them three or four times. They will eventually tell you. They will say, well, the IRS said well, you owed them money, and, uh, and uh, so we gave it to them. Now you got them. Why? You have a court order saying the IRS said they didn't have jurisdiction. So now I don't even talk to the IRS anymore. I go full, hell bent after the bank. I'm going to take the bank and I'm going to I'm going to walk them to the cliff and they're going to gladly jump off because the bank has deep pockets. They'll replace it. It's a little bit of work. Now, ten years ago, I had a big job. It was a restaurant. It was about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The materials that I was going to buy was about a hundred thousand. I don't have that kind of money to buy because I was doing a restaurant and restaurants buy ugly tile normally I do flooring this was a and this happened to be a Mexican restaurant so it, it was oh, I forgot what they call it now saltillo tile it's just in my opinion it looks like broken bottle or broken anyway it just looks like it's broken and you put it all together I couldn't sell that somewhere else but because I'm buying 25,000 square feet the thin set the grout the wall tile for the bathrooms, it's $100,000. I got a $100,000 check up front. I deposited in my checking account. I made the deposit, got my truck, and started heading towards the job. I was gone five minutes. I get a phone call. The IRS, it was the bank that said, oh, the IRS said to give them that money. Now, how did the IRS know I deposited? The bank called them. Why? Over a certain amount, they have to call. So I, I just said, that's not a problem. I went back to the bank and, 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 and sat in the parking lot in my truck, and I called them with a pad, and I said, okay, who's the legal department? Oh, and this bank is Chase. They said, well, we, I said, first of all, do, we, do you guys have a legal department? We do. Oh, well, where is it? Well, it's in Manhattan. Well, Manhattan's a, who is, so me, like I am, oh, Manhattan, Germany? What was it doing over there? No, no, no. Manhattan, New York. Oh, you didn't say that. See, I'm going to get all the information I can from them. So they finally gave me the, the address and everything. I called the, the bank, the, the home office, and I said, hey, do you, have a, do, we, do you have a legal department in your building, or do you use a legal uh, a, uh, law firm? Oh, no, we have our own private uh, lawyers to handle Chase's stuff. Wonderful. Who's the... Who's the lead attorney? So they gave it to me. So what I did, I put a letter together, and I told them, I deposited money in your bank. Your bank took my money and sent it to the IRS. So they came back and said, well, the IRS said you owed them money. I said, oh, I had that adjudicated. I went to the tax court, and I adjudicated it. Here's my proof. I took my court order. With my court order, I uh, highlight. I said hey, it's enclosed for your for your convenience and highlight it. I highlighted it. I sent it to the attorneys, and I told the attorneys, "I'm giving you 21 days. If the money is not back in my account, then I'm going to go use everything in my ability, included but not limited to a lawsuit, because." I have to see what they did because I've already had it adjudicated, as you can see. Before the end of that day, I had $100,000 back in my account. And the reason for it is they knew where it was going. So I found out right then, here we go. This is how it needs to be done. Now, if they wouldn't have done it, see, I would have taken my paperwork and I would have had to go to court because that wasn't my money. It was, it was my client. I got the money, did the job, and to this day, it's been, it's been 11 years. The, the, the Chase Bank has never put a lien on my account. When I walk into the bank, if I deposit $40,000, the next day I can get $40,000 out in cash and don't sign jack nothing. They just don't want to deal with me. Now, Social Security, it's the same thing. Again, if they're taking your Social Security check, what I do, of course, they'll send you a thing in the mail, and I have an address. 
you write that person a letter, the address, dear Social Security. My name is, I'm supposed to get $1,600 a month. I'm getting $200. I'm $1,400 short. I'm confused. Why is it short $1,400? Help me with this. I don't understand. They'll send you back a letter and they'll say, well, the IRS said. Now I got them. See? They, so then what I tell them is, okay, here's what the problem is. I've already had that adjudicated. Is the Social Security and the Internal Revenue Service, are they the same entity? In other words, if I owed Social Security and you give it to the, to the IRS, you're giving a third party my money on hearsay evidence. And I work all that in. Because how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So what ends up happening is if you have a retirement that they're taking, Let's say you got a Scotts trade or a, a Prudential or whatever it is. All of a sudden, you're getting five thousand dollars a month retirement. All of a sudden, you're getting two thousand. It's missing three thousand. Dear Prudential, I'm supposed to get five thousand dollars. My account number is my name. Is there, do you know your name? You have to give them your whatever it is you give them. I don't understand. Something's wrong. Can you tell me? They, you know. They'll tell you. They'll be glad. Well, we're doing it. We didn't do anything wrong. Didn't say you did. We didn't do anything wrong. We're doing what the IRS said. The same story shows up all the time. Since, the, since you're doing what the IRS said, wonderful. Here's the problem. I went to the, to the tech tax court, the United States Federal Tax Court. The IRS is federal. I had it adjudicated. See Exhibit A, included and highlighted for your convenience. And I highlight the part that says the commissioner said we didn't do, <clears throat> and it comes back and they say that they didn't do 2662.12, Title 2662.13a. They didn't do that. What it says is um, it's recommended to give you a notice of deficiency and a notice of determination, and it's, re I'm sorry, a notice of deficiency, it's, it's recommended, and a notice of determination is absolutely mandatory. So that's why they didn't. See, now I've got them by the short hairs. And what I do is I'm not going to get into this, well, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm old, I'm young, i got short hair, i got long hair. I'm a non-resident alien. I'm a Texian. I, I'm from. I'm a Floridian. Uh, I live in Tallahassee. I live in Austin. I live in Lansing. I live in. Doesn't matter. It's not about me. And this is a problem that I'm having. I'm trying to stress. It's not about us. And one more but, question, then. Absolutely. Uh, what have you used with the uh, DOJ then? When they've uh, when you've been to uh, district court and they. You've okay. come up with an agreement now, to pay? Absolutely. Okay, now lies the problem. So what you have to do, the question is, see, uh, the DOJ will take you to the federal district court for farting in the courtroom, but is it an IRS issue? Uh, I mean, the IRS took, or they, you know, we, we went into, uh, or I was on my way to going to district court, and then we had our little hearing, and, because of the way okay. that things were right at that time, I agreed to pay them the monthly payments. Okay. Herein lies the problem, okay? If I put, if I twist your finger and it hurts, and I tell you I'm not going to let go of it until you pay me, and you agree to pay me, when I let go of your finger, am I going to expect to be paid? <laughs> See, I can so run away. you're just... I understand that. So you have a little bit different. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick scenario, and after I do that, I'm going to tell you the hope that I've been having really good success with. Okay, if I put a steel-toed boot on and I kick you as hard as I can in the scrotum, would it hurt? Would it hurt who? See, how, there is how we're going to get them. See, in other words, you told them you would pay them. Now, what you're going to have to do is pull Pull your indictment. The indictment is going to say Title 26, uh, 7213, willful failure to file an income tax return. Now, 7213 happens to be Title 27. 
Now, mm -hmm. if you go to the ta if you go to the tax court, the tax search is going to say we don't have jurisdiction. We didn't do uh, sixty two twelve and sixty two thirteen eight. Tell me why they didn't do that when they had to do it. Why did they not do sixty two twelve and sixty two thirteen a? Why would they not do that knowing they had to do it? Why? Because they can get away with it, I guess. So. No. No, there's no implementing regulation. So they can't do it. Okay, yeah. But they, see? Okay. okay, now I want to ask you this. If your wife or girlfriend is allergic to seafood, in other words, her throat swells up, her eyes go closed, and she can't breathe very well, okay, can she eat scallops? What's the definition? What are you calling seafood? See how simple that was? As soon as you, now you're going to make me that. Well, seafood is S E E. Is that seafood? <laughs> well, I can see food. We just hope close your eyes and I can eat all I want. No, that's not what we meant. Now you got them. That's what I do on everything. I make sure every time, everything, every issue is defined. And it's not always in my favor. That's not the point. The point is. How can you answer a question if you don't understand the question? Now, let me ask you this. I'm going to pay you money back, but you have to tell, no, do you know how to do the gazintas? So if I give you the gazintas, you'll know how much I owe you. Can you do gazintas? I think I know what a gazinta is. See what you in just my... did? Okay, what is it? Nope, you said you think you do. What is it? It's the opposite of a gazada. Exactly not. I'm not paying you. You owe me money. You say you did, you go to jail. See how simple that is? The easiest yeah. thing for you to say is, I don't know what a gazinta is, even if I know. Why? Because, see, you said it's the opposite of a gazada. No, it's not. Two gazinta, four, four gazinta. See, now it's not. What? But I was going to say that. But since you said that, hmm, I did something else. I want you to understand this. <laughs> Answer this question for me. What color is a red shirt? What color is a red shirt? Okay. Uh, uh, because because it's, uh, it's, a, it's well, is it a, a pullover? Uh, no, no, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a, pull, it's a polo. What color is a red shirt with a pocket and a collar and three buttons on it? What color is a red shirt? It depends. No, it doesn't depend. If it's been bleached, it's not going to be red anymore. Well, see, what you're doing, you're already defining it for yourself, aren't you? Yep. See? Now, I'm okay, it's not bleached. Now, I'm, I'm a back in the corner. It's not bleached. What color is a red shirt? I'll have to say red then. Okay, oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah. I'm colorblind. I see one color, gray, so there are no red shirts. See, in other words, oh, well, I meant, well, I, see, we can't do what you just did. That's my opinion. Does that make sense? I couldn't figure out a way out of it. <laughs> I know it. And see, I'm, I'm not telling you it's easy. I'm not saying that. It's simple. It's just not easy, okay? Right. And so what we're trying to do here is show you a different way to do it. So what we're doing on the Social Security number, I've got, I'm probably... Uh, we're holding this. We got several more we just put in there. But of the older ones, I'm probably 11 for 11, and I got four or five more that are going in. So, so far, the ones that I have helped people get were 11 for 11. Restoring, restoring their Social Security. Now, if you can tell the Social Security number or the Social Security Department, the IRS and the Social Security. See, the Social Security, you think about this a minute. The IRS tells them that you, you uh, okay, the, the IRS calls the Social Security and says, they, he owes me money, I want his money. Okay? General Motors, I had a car repossessed in, uh, in 1952. So General Motors calls my bank and says, I want his account to pay for that car we repossessed. And they did it. What would happen, do you think,
and the bank did it, well, you'd want to go after the bank. I mean, uh, exactly. So if the IRS is taking your money through the Social Security number, to, I'm sorry, through the Social Security Administration, would the DOJ? But... No, it does. Okay, again, is the DOJ and the Internal Revenue Service the same entity? No. Then how can they do it? I've already gone to the tax court. The tax court adjudicated my uh, 1993 to 2018. I don't have a tax burden on the grounds. They did not follow protocol. So when the bank tries to take my money, Social Security tries to take my money, when the school loan tries to take my money, the question is, is the Social Security and the, the DOJ the same entity? No. Then the DOJ can't go to the Social Security and get my money. They can't. But if you let them do it, they will. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess uh, that stopping it and then trying to get the money back will be the... Well, don't worry about getting the money back. Out. See, okay, see, here's the problem, everybody. Oh, I want all my money back. Well, don't wait till you get it all back and then I'll help you. Let's get it stopped so you can have your monthly payment. Then you've got time to sit back and get your check every month, drink your Mai Tai, watch the, your favorite TV show, and then we have nothing to do but snipe them. We can stand there and <laughs> snipe them and snipe them and never go and never stop. Why? Because you got money to go. Where that's the biggest problem. It, it, it's not about the money. It's about stopping what they're doing first. Once you stop it and you get your money re in other words, you get your money redirected to you and we never get the money back. But you try until the day you die. At least You've got your money back. You try to get all your money back first, and they don't. And they drag their feet for the rest of your life. They're going to take everything. When you die, they're going to have not only a million dollars. They'll have two. They'll have three, four, five million dollars of your money. Why? Because see, they're they're not used to this kind of argument. Does that make sense? Yes, see? it does. They're, they're not used to this kind of thing. See? Now, I want to ask you a question. What state do you live in, if you don't mind me asking? What part of the country? I live in the east of uh, the United States. Perfect. On the east side of the United States, in what state does water flow from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill? On the east side of the state, what state? In the liquid state. See how simple that was? Or you can say, I don't know what state. Does. See, in other words, every state in the union, it, it, if, if it's frozen, it doesn't go downhill. See? Okay, now, there's a snowball. I'm from Michigan originally. There's a snowball running down the hill going 70 miles an hour, and it's 14 tons. How do you stop it? <laughs> so one bite at a time. Okay, now it's, now, it's 15, now it's 15 tons and it's going 85. Now it's 92 tons going 105. <laughs> see, see, you stand there with your thumb up your butt. doesn't help. Stay, I know, it's like snappy answers. Okay, how do you stop it? When it's the size of a golf ball at the top, you pick it up and throw it aside. It's done. What I'm finding out, mm -hmm. instead of waiting until that sucker's going 100 miles an hour and it's 65 tons, it's hard to stop because if you put your car in front of it, it'll yeah. crush the car and keep right on going. Okay, so we have yeah. to stop it early. We have to find the yeah. weak link. We, see, and th this process helps you find the weak link. Does it, will it work for you? I don't know. It works for me because... I don't know how to let go. I want to quit doing this. I no longer want to do this. I want this to be my last call. I don't know how to stop. How do you stop? See, yeah. there's thousands of people out there that need my help. Well, maybe I'm just blowing smoke at you. I don't know. But but uh, I, Gary, I, I you're, hmm? uh, you, you, you're just great for doing this. I mean, I just uh, have well, a lot of respect well, for I'm trying, you. Know, I'm trying my best to do life. It. 
but, this is your life yeah, that you're but, dedicating. Yeah, well, I know. But the, the point that I'm trying to make to you, see, what we try to do is we try to we try to think the old way. I call it stinking thinking. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to shoot you with an. I have a nine millimeter and I have a forty-five. What do you want me to shoot you with? Neither. See how simple that was? See, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I don't want to shoot me either. Okay, never mind. See? Now, there, we, we just look at it. Now, what uh, most people would say, well, how, 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 what's bigger? Well, which one has the most um, uh, 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 speed to it? Which gun's bigger? How close are you going to be? I'm going to answer all that because that's what we're doing as the IRS is reaching in our pocket taking it. Me, I don't care what they do. Because when they reach in my pocket, see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut it. I'm cutting it off. All right. I want to yield the floor. Anybody else might have a question out there? You've done it. Thank you very much. I I have have some 1040 instructions if you want to show us where it is. All right. Go to page 100. Now, while you're looking for it, go to page 100. and, And what we're trying to do here is... We're, I'm going to show you something here now that where we have our problem is the IRS is not your friend, okay? I got a letter from them, and it told me to stop writing them letters because I'm um, harassing them. The next day, I sent out five. Tuesday, I sent out five. Wednesday, I sent out five. Thursday, I sent out five. Friday, I sent out ten. I hope that... I hope that that, I hope that came across for them, right? See, well, I can't do it. They told me not to do it. Okay, did you find page 100? I did. It's called Disclosure Privacy Act Paperwork Perfect. Reduction. Oh, okay, it's got three columns, the left, the middle, and the right. Take your right. eyes to the top of the left side and go back and forth until you see the, wor- the number. It's all, it's all words. So you see the number, 6,001. Let me know when you find it. I'm going to have you read it. And then I'm going to show you what I'm doing, and they're they're pulling their hair out. When you come across it, let me know. Our legal right to ask for information. Stop right there. It. Who's up? Hold on. Who's our? Let's figure them. out what they're saying. Who's them? Okay. No, it's they. It's Sam's. Who's they? Who's our? The IRS. There you go. So let's read it that way. See, I make, I'm going to make you understand it. You may not like me, but you're going to understand it. And, and so when you have to do something, you understand why you're doing it. Well, I did it because this nut job on the phone told me to do it. That ain't yeah. going to help you when, they, when you get pinched. Now, let's read it that way. The IRS legal right to ask for information is our Internal Revenue Code 6001, 6011, 6012A, and their regulations. Stop they right say, there. Hold on. Just hold on. Okay. Hold on. So tell me what that just said. That uh, somewhere within those three sites. No, sir. No, sir. Somewhere? No, sir. Come on. The IRS has those. a legal... Okay, wait a minute. The IRS has a legal right to ask. Remember, the 1040, uh, the Title 26 is 10,000 pages, eight and a half inches thick. Okay, now, I'm going to ask you a question. You, have, you owe $42,000, and it says so in Title 26, 6861.25B. Tell me what I just did. Okay, read it again. You you don't have a legal right to say that because it's not Bingo. one of the So wait a minute, what's three. the op- what's the opposite of legal? Lawful. Nope. That's the illegal. Same. Legal and lawful. Okay, so it's illegal. So I'm gonna finish this story and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna finish this up. Okay. You go to court and the court says you owe ten thousand dollars. So you you're going to tell the judge, okay, I'm going to pay this in meth- methamphetamines. I'm going, to bring a, I'm going to bring a box of meth in. 
can I pay my bill in that? Tell me what the judge would say. Realistically, oh, what would he say? That's illegal. Why? Oh, wait a minute. It's what? Illegal. Okay, so methamphetamines to the court and to the judge is the same thing as any 6681 point to the IRS, isn't it? Right. Okay, okay, now let's pick up where you did that and the regulation. Now I'm going to read the rest of it and I'm going to stop you because it makes a funny, there's a funny transition there. Go ahead. They say that you must file stop. a return. Stop. Who's they? Hold on. Who's oh. they? <laughs> the IRS See? says that you must no. file a return. No, the IRS, no, no. The IRS has oh. no right to ask. Who's they? The, the three sections in the code above. Bingo. That's right. 6001, 6011, 6012 says. Let's see what it says. That you must file a return or statement with us. Stop right any. there. Hold on. You must. You don't have an option. Tell me what you have to file. You don't have an option. What is it? Or a statement. Okay, or a statement. Nope. What do you have to file? Well, you got me there. Okay, read it again. Pick up right there where it says, they say. Those statutes say that you must file a return or statement. Stop, stop, with stop, it. stop. Wait, you're going too fast. They say you must file what? A return or state. Okay, does it say 1040 there? No, it doesn't. The 1040 booklet says I can't file a 1040. It says I have to file a return or statement. It does not say 1040. That's why I don't file one. I have nothing to defend. You know what it says? Yep. Okay, so my question is, do you file a 1040? The instructions told me not to. See, no, it doesn't tell you not to. It tells you you can't. Yeah. It says you have to file a return. Is a 1040 a return? Yes, but so is a 1041, a CT1, a 943, a 944. So is a... Is a twenty-two ninety-one? They're all returns. Now they got a problem or statement. So a statement is equal to a return, is it not? Right. Give me a statement right now. Tell me a statement. The sky is blue. There you go. You're good for next year. That's what it says. Do you follow ten forty? I can't. Why? The booklet says I can't. <laughs> so isn't that what it says? You know what it says? Hello? Yes. So write on a piece of paper, 20, 20, the sky is blue. You're done for 2020. You got it, buddy. You're done. So willful failure to file is, why does it say 7203? That's Title 27. Why does, why do they, why does it say it in Title 27? Title 27 is alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. So you have to file one there. You can't file a 1040. Why? It tells me not to. If you file one, then you're admitting uh, you sell alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Mm. Does it, wait a minute. I'm not trying to... Okay, if you don't understand it, and you don't, if that's not what it says, then correct me. I got you. Okay, now... 7701B1 says, anybody that doesn't file a tax return goes to prison. Tell me what I just told you. If I sell, if I manufacture or sell firearms, nope. I have to file not a what I told you. It's not, that's okay. not what I told you. That's not what I told you. Okay, how about this? 6100 says you have to file a tax return or you go to prison. What did I just do? You made a... I don't know. 
Okay? Our legal right to ask. That's illegal, didn't I? Didn't I just make an illegal? Do, now, uh, didn't I just make an illegal? Yes. Anything the IRS does, anything they do is illegal. Now, if you will, go to Title 26, 6012, and let's read the heading on it. So if you want to learn Title 26, print 6001, 6011, 6012, and their regulations. It's 28 pages. That's all you have to know. Why is that all you have to know? Because that's their legal, that's the IRS's legal right to ask. There it is. So if they ask you, they can't. Isn't that what it says? Right. So what I have done, I put these together so when people that call me say, I'm going to get indicted, we take that in there, and that's our argument. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. I was supposed okay. to look up section 6001, right? No, no, 6012. Figures. Just read the heading on it. After you read the heading, I'm going to ask you, make you break it down. See, people that want to read it, I'll right to ask. Now, let's see who our is. The IRS's legal right to ask is 6001, 6011, 6012A, and their regulations. They say, well, who's they? Those three sections say you must file a return or statement. doesn't say a 1040. In fact, if you file a 1040, that, you're saying that's a return. See, I can't make that decision. Doesn't that make That's sense? Right. I don't make this. Okay, I can't make it. So my question is, is a 1040 a return? Yes. Is a 22, uh, is a 22 uh, 96 a return? Yes. Is a CT1 a return? Well, yeah. Is a 1041 a return? Yes. Okay, which one of those do I have to file according to that? Well, you got to do a 1040. Okay, well, I'm, I'm doing the equivalent. The 1040 return is equivalent to the statement. The sky is blue. Here, here it is. Keep the change. See? That's what it says. Now, have you gotten the 6012? Persons required to make returns of income. Okay. So, don't you think this is important? Persons liable. Now, my question is, why does it say that? Why does it say uh, you have to file a return of statement? Because it doesn't say anything about income, does it? So somebody, some per, some person somewhere is liable to file a return of income. <coughs> See, doesn't the booklet tell you you can't file? Are you the person that's supposed to file a return of income? Are you? You tell me. No, I'm not telling you diddly. You're asking me for legal advice. I know what it says in that section. It tells you in black and white exactly who has to file. A return of income. Doesn't this make sense? Yeah. Okay, let me ask you a question. Have you ever read the 1040 booklet before? On and off parts of it, but no. Okay, so whose fault is it that you that you, that you got the problem you got? Mine. See? Now, do, do you have a checking account? I'm going to just show you how subtle this is. Do you have a checking account? Yeah. Does it have checks with it? No. Okay, so you don't have any checks. Okay, not a problem. Anybody that has a checking account, if you'll grab your checks... Now, I'm going to show you the same thing that they're doing to us here, they're doing to us on our checking account, why they get away with what they're doing. Now, do you have any questions for me there? Does that make sense for you now? Yeah, are we done with that 6012? Yeah, I mean, that. yeah, that's up to you, you know. Let me make a okay. suggestion. Print it and then print. Do you know where to get the, and the regulation? you know what the reg, where the regulation is? Is it 7703? 
No, CFR, Code of Federal Regulations. Oh, right, 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 right. See? There it is, right there. It's three pages long. All you have to do is know those four pages, and it'll tell you verbatim because it tells you exactly who has to pay and everything. Now, let me show you how buttholish I am. Do you mind me if I ask you a personal question? No, go ahead. Okay, if you walk in my front door, I won't recognize you from Adam. I would not know anything about you. The question is, are you a man of color? No. Well, uh, that's fucked up. Oh, it's too late. You said no. Wait a minute. So you're, you're not a man of color, so you're black. No. <laughs> okay, the definition of black is lack of, is the absence of all color. So that would have to be a person, see, you, oh, white is the reflection of all color. A white right. person is a, okay, so, so you're not white, you're black. Isn't that what you just said? Yep. See, do you see how so, it just got away from us? That's why I am like I am. It says right there, see, you get a letter in the mail that says, you didn't file a 1040. Is there a reason? Hell yeah. See, the 1040 booklet said I couldn't file one. I send them that page, I highlight that sentence, and I mail it in. I'm done. I'm done. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. See? Do you have a question for me now anymore? Because we're, we're, we're going to ask somebody else if they do. But you see how simple we're trying to make this? Yeah. Okay, if you're interested in that package I put together, uh, I don't know if Ed has it or not. If, ask him for it. If he doesn't, he'll get to me, and I'll send it on to him, and he can send it on to you. Now, the other thing that I have that I use, do you have a Black's Law Dictionary, or does somebody on the phone tonight have a Black's Law Dictionary? I'm going to try to guide you now and show you what they're doing to us. Does anybody have a Black's Law Dictionary? Okay, then we'll, we, we, we'll, we won't touch on that right now. Um, look it up online. It, okay, if you will, I want you to look up Oh, the word F O R M. Before you do, you got to do a 1040 form. So, what does the word form mean? Tell me what it means, so that when you look it up, we can see if you knew what it was or not. Hello? Can you help me I'm out looking, here? I'm looking for it. No, don't look it up. I want you to tell me what it is first, and then we'll look it up. I'm just going to show you. So, tell me what the word form is. Okay, you're not doing what I ask you. What is the word uh, form? That's, um, it's the shape that something takes. Okay, it's the shape something takes. Not a problem. Now, go, go online and put in defin form definition Black's Law, and it'll pop up. And then I'm going to have you look up one more word because in the definition they use another word, and we need to know what that means so we so we can see what they're doing to us. We have to know. See, if if you if you let me ask a question: If somebody hit you with a hammer, would it hurt your? Would it hurt you? Hurt who? You. That's a sheep. What do you, what's a sheep? A you. That's right. Okay. If if somebody hits you, hits uh, I don't know your name with a hammer in the head, would it hurt? Yes. Why? Really? My grandson hit me yesterday with a Nerf hammer, and it didn't hurt a bit. You don't know enough about it to answer it. You have to know. See, that's just what they're doing to us. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. Now. Okay, read the read the word form, F O R M for us. I'm working on it. Okay, and then while he's doing that, does anybody have a question? I do. All right, please ask it. Uh, this is Steve. Terry, have you heard from anybody that has had liens released during this? 
uh, COVID-19 deal? Okay, the problem is we haven't had it long enough. The COVID-19, we're having a hard time even having them answer the phones. The courts are shut down. Now is the perfect time for you to get all your letters ready because when they flip the switch, they'll be there. Instead of waiting okay, for somebody and, to, be ahead of, to be ahead of you. But during the COVID-19, I don't even know people that's gotten a ticket. So I, I mean, okay. I can't tell you anybody that's got a ticket or anything. So you haven't heard from anybody that has no. reported their liens have been released? No. Okay. Bec the reason I ask is we are now getting um, full payment on Social Security and retirement. I filed the second time uh, with the tax court for the years Wonderful. that they denied me. The second time they called and you know from their home because of this COVID nineteen, and it was initially because I didn't pay the sixty dollars. But then when I got the order, um, we didn't have fifteen pages like the first time and okay. it just basically said uh this case is dismissed for lack of jurisdiction and it would take okay. a few extra days because everybody's working from home well then all of a sudden we got our social security checks and they were full checks which can the I irs had you, been yep. can i ask you a question yes are you pissed are you pissed no not at all I was going to say, because if you are, I'll send you, I'll send you the drafting instructions to a checking account that I know of, and you can just dump the money in it. No, I'm elated. Um, I know. But, Thank you. I'm glad you, thanks for telling us. Let's just take but the it was due to, Yeah. I'll take yes. the credit for it, whether I, whether I had anything to do with it or not, I'll take the credit for it. Well, so, you did, because I'm, we I'm, filed I'm the second time on just okay. those years. Right. See, what happens is, unfortunately, you can't just ask one time. Sometimes you have to ask 10 or 15 times, and it's fine. If you do it, you do it. Does, thank you for sharing that with me. I'm glad you got your money. I bet the, uh, it's made a, a big difference, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Thank you for sharing that. Now, after this is done, I'll go over how you get your money back, all of it back. I'll show you how to do that. And uh, okay. there's a, there's a pro I came up with a process that will help you do that. you got to take it from them. They're not just going to roll over, but that's okay. It, it, now that you got your money, if you even if we don't get it back, you're in better shape than you were. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. Man, oh, man, I'm going to sleep good tonight. Thank you for sharing that. I'm glad. You're welcome. Okay, now, Guy, did you look up for him? I have it. You right, ready? I want you to read it. Yes. A model or skeleton of an instrument to be used in a judicial proceeding. Stop right there. Hold on. Hold on. Tell me what you just said. A model or skeleton to be used in a, a, a instrument to be used in a judicial proceeding. Let me tell you what that says. It's a model or skeleton of an instrument to be used in a court of law. Right. See, that's not what you said. Is that what you thought it was? Well, a judicial proceeding, yes. Okay, but I'm, you said what? That's what oh, I wanted no, you to tell no. you. Oh, you said it was a shape. See, now let's finish it up because there's another word I want you to look up. Go ahead and finish it up. Containing the principal necessary matters and proper technical terms or phrases and whatever else is necessary to make it formally correct, arranged in proper and methodological order methodical and methodical order. thank you thank you and capable of being adapted to the circumstances of the specific case now you can't win in other words you're going to fill out a form and they can change it they can put anything on that they want all caps no caps tall man short man uh, made money didn't make money in other words it's now it's a modern skeleton of an instrument now look up instrument what if what a form is? It's an instrument. It's a model or skeleton of an instrument. So we need to know what instrument is. This is why I I think it's very important to know what different things are. Do not answer the question until you know what they're asking. 
a written document, a written document, a formal or legal document in writing, such as a contract, deed, will, bond, or lease. Okay. So what it is is a form is a um, – so when you fill out your 1040, you're willing all of your money now and in the future to uh, – to the to uh, to the uh, IRS, who is the federal or conveying Reserve. it to them by deed. There you go. Okay. So we go in there and we say, "Wait a minute! I'm not. I'm not going to have to do this because I'm not a. Doesn't matter what you are. That's why I do what I do. That's why I'm showing you what it is. So I have a glossary page. All this stuff is on the glossary page. My glossary page goes with everything. I can send my glossary page. It's not. I went through and picked out, oh, I don't know, probably three dozen, 40, 40 words, and I have defined them by Black's Law Dictionary, by Bovier, by the Constitution, by Supreme Court cases. And so when, when, when I put that in my document, if they throw it out, they're screwed. Because when they ask me something, I'm biz it's bizarre. I, I went to court. I gave the judge my the glossary page. He said, we're not going to use it. So he said, for the record, what's your name? I said, thank you for asking. 1965 Chevy. What? Yes, sir. Impala. What are you saying? Four speed. Fastest car in the county. He said, that's enough. Get up here. He said, what are you doing? Well, you're not using my glossary page, so I swear I'm telling you right now, didn't you ask me what my first car was? No, I didn't. So you are using my glossary page. So it took us 45 minutes to argue the fact that my glossary page wasn't being used. So from this point on, if you ask me a question, you're going to have to define it so I understand. Just like that. He says, okay, we're going to do, this case is dismissed. We don't have, I don't have time to deal with this guy. He's crazy. There's something wrong with you. I said, no, no, there's not. I asked my mom. My mom said I was just fine. Does that make sense? That's beautiful. See, what happens is if you don't know what they're saying, we have to know what they're saying. The law says I have a chance to do a meeting of the minds. Do you know what meeting of the minds means? Yes. What? It means that I understand what you understand and you understand what I understand and we're working from the same point of thought. There you go. So that's why I give them a glossary page. To me, this made perfect sense. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Now, um, um, I'm a little I'm a little off key here because that's just the way I am. I can't help myself. Um, but but this is what happens. What's happening is they're they're making these laws. What they're saying is. Um, you can't carry a gun without it being registered. Well, lucky for me, I don't have any guns. And the reason I don't have any guns is I carry arms. My arms are, I have a right to keep and bear them. What's an arm? I have no idea. It ain't been defined. But guns have been. So you can't get into a field. Now, I wanna, I'm going to throw this out at you and show you how off the hinge that I am. I got a friend that got a DWI, and I hate it that he drinks and drives. Now, .08 is a, it's a measurement that they do a blood alcohol that you're two times the legal limit. Now they got a problem. They said legal limit. In Texas, we have an alcohol beverage code. What does the alcohol beverage code cover? I don't know. Do you think? You don't know? Probably okay, the regulation of bars and restaurants. Well, wait a minute. That's not what it, it doesn't say. Bars and restaurant code. It says alcohol beverage code. It's the oh, code right. on alcohol beverages. Right. Okay, I don't care what it does. It's the, it's the law of alcohol, isn't it? Right. Okay, Point oh eight. what section... Of the alcohol beverage code, do you think it's in? Don't know. It's not. 
So if it's not there, where is it? It's not in the transportation code. So transportation code tells you what you can drive and you can't drive. The alcohol beverage code is it controls the alcohol. So where in the heck is it? It's in the state code. So under the law, Title 27 has regulations. Title 26 doesn't. You cannot borrow a, a, a code, a regulation from Title 27 and put an implement. Okay, Title 26 does not have an implementing regulation. You cannot borrow the implementing regulation from Title 27 and enforce it on 26. You can't do that. That's the law. So you cannot put an alcohol beverage code. It's not in there. So they're taking a state code, putting it on the alcohol uh, uh, beverage code, and then they're using it. You can't do that. I don't agree with drinking and driving, but what they're doing, they do it on everything. They do it wrong, and they're making us pay for it. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. So what we're trying to do here is try to get you to think a different way. So now that, now that you, you filled out a form that has a shape, that's not what you're filling out, is it? No. See? So you're filling out something that you don't even know what it is. So you're filling out something you don't know what it is, what it does, how it works, or who gets it. Then you're signing it and sending it to them. That's the reason why I don't do a 1040. The 1040 is a form. And, the, and see, the, the own, their own booklet, the 1040 instructions, tells me I can't file a 1040 form. It says I can file a return or statement. I chose to do a statement. I type on a piece of paper every year, eat shit and die, and I put it in my, my and it says you must file it with us. My filing cabinet, I wrote U.S. on it. That's my us. They didn't define us, so I put it on my filing cabinet. It's the third drawer. Fourth batch says us, and I put it right in there. So I'm good for that. So I was tired of doing it every year, so I did about 14 years of them. So I, I'm all the way out to 20, um, 51 or something. Outstanding. But do, does anybody else have a question? Yeah, okay. I've got a okay. question on lack of jurisdiction. What was that? I said, I got a question. This is Bob on lack of jurisdiction. It's driving me crazy. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so here goes, all right? So what we're all going through now is, is they're coming back and they're saying that, if, you know, they dismissed it for lack of jurisdiction. So here's what I'm thinking, okay? The IRS moved to dismiss the, the petition for lack of jurisdiction, and they said that the taxpayer uh, never objected, which we didn't. But here's what I, here's what I find interesting. The court found that for all of the years at issue, that the IRS had not issued any notices of deficiencies or notices of determination concerning collection action or any other notice that would confer jurisdiction on the court. As the petition was either not filed within the required time after notices were issued or, here's the big one, the IRS has not issued the notices at all. Okay, so here's my question. We know that they didn't do the, the notices, okay? But, yeah. and, and that's why the court dismissed it. But, is it safe to say... No, stop the right IRS there. Stop right there. Hold on. That is not why the court dismissed it. All right, so here's, here's what I think, why they dismissed it. No, I, I, tell, no I don't care what you think. I'm going to tell you why they did it, because it says right on there, because the respondent, that's the commissioner, the commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service said they don't have jurisdiction because we did not do those things right there. That's the reason right. it's been dismissed. Now, you can go any way you want, but that to me is, is the best thing. Get a certified copy, take that if you have to, down to your county and file it in the county. Now I you've got it. something you can argue. Okay, then, 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 then if you want to have, if you I have liens on, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. No. No. I was saying I already did that. Yeah. But 
but I thought, I, you know, I've been thinking about it. The reason why the IRS is saying this is because they know that they didn't do the notice of lien. I mean, the, uh, the uh, notices of deficiency, especially statutory. And that's why they filed it. And then what they're saying is, is the court's agreeing with them, not because of, you know, of us. It's they're, 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 they're agreeing with the IRS. So the IRS twists it around a little bit. But the, the, the fact of the matter is they dismissed it because they knew that they didn't send out any notices of deficiencies. Okay, that's what it says. So and that, yeah, you can do whatever then do whatever you want. I'm telling you, you got what you need. Use that. that use right. that. I've told you this before. You have what you need. Right. They're telling you that's not what it says. Not a problem. What I'm doing in that case is I'm writing them a letter, and I tell them this is what the, that I put it in writing. Release my liens. Right. Okay, start over. Do a 12277 form. That's the release of, of notice of lien. They're going to come back. They've done it 100% of the time. You don't qualify because of 6332J. Now what I do is I take that piece of paper and go back to them and say, sorry, 6332J doesn't pertain to this case because I never received a notice of deficiency. They're going to come back and say, you, miss, you misquoted that. I now got what I want. I then go after the IRS agent saying, not a problem. Send me your bar card because you're making, you're practicing the law without a license. Giving you 15 days to do it. Gary, we got three pieces of the pie. We got three bites of the apple. One, they said you didn't qualify because of 6332J. That has nothing to do with anything because they never, and you got, see, what, again, what, what we're trying to do and here's a perfect example. What they're trying to do is you want them to roll over and kiss your ass. It ain't going to happen. We have to take no. it from them. So how do you right. eat an elephant? One bite One at a time. Bite. Okay, so if we get right. 500 so bites. Here's, right. here's the thing that I'm thinking, Carrie, right? In general, in order for the tax court to have jurisdiction over a petition, the IRS must have issued the taxpayer a notice of deficiency. Which That's is what it says. That's what it says. Right. And if I could interject. Okay. There's no assessment of deficiency. If there, if there is okay. no assessment of deficiencies of any tax imposed, they can't, they can't stop collection or anything. Until That's what it says. There's your argument. See, there's your it, argument. But you want to go back. You want to go back and argue something else. Yeah, go ahead. There's a guy that wants to put some input here. Go well, ahead. I wanted to interject one thing, and that's when I objected to the initial decision and said that uh, I had never received them. And they came back and said that I supported their argument rather than uh, def than uh, yeah. okay against it. When, after that, okay. that was ordered back. The, the defendant's argument support rather than. Uh, Right. Um, okay, the, let me ask you, a, here's what they're saying. Okay, here's what they're saying. Tomato, tomato. It doesn't matter. You don't understand. Exactly. See, what's happening exactly. is you don't understand. Okay, let me ask you a question. What is arsenic? Depends what your definition of arsenic. No, sir, it doesn't matter what my definition is. I'll give you some and you take it. You'll know what it is. It's poison. Now, the question is, will poison, will arsenic kill everybody on the planet? Will it kill you if you take it? Enough of it, yes. Wait, see what you did? You just changed the story. That's what they're trying to do. You take two drops of it, it's good for you. Why? It kills your parasite. See, you can't drink the whole bottle, it'll kill you. But you take a drop, one drop in a five-ounce glass of water, do that every day for two months, it kills all your parasites. It's a good thing. You see, in other words, what they gave us was a good thing. We now have to use it to our advantage. If you don't understand what you have, you can't use it. Bob, if you don't mind, would you read yours? Yeah. Read yours, okay? What do you want uh, to when do? you start to 
I want you to read your order, and I'll stop you. You tell me what it says. Go ahead. Oh, I no, I, I'm past the order. I'm at I'm at the appellate state. At the appellate state, I don't have it. Well, okay, oh. that's fine. We don't care. Then, then that's how you answer it. You answer it. I object. Right. You know, I want this case dismissed on the grounds. They still have never given. See, they're basing their whole thing. On, on, okay, on fiction. Okay, the guy that just stepped in here and, and put in your two cents word, I appreciate that very much. May I ask you a question? This is Dan in Virginia. That's right. Dan, I want to ask you a question. On a colored television set, what color is Mickey Mouse on a colored TV? Well, Mickey Mouse is just a uh, cartoon drawing, so he is not real. See? That's what we have to understand. That's what they're trying to tell us. They're trying to say that's that's a fic, that's fictitious and don't let me. It, we just have to understand what they're saying and build a defense against what they're saying. That's why I came up right. with this saying. This is what I put in my paper now. Anything you say can and will be used against you. This is what it says. I highlight it. Anything you say can and will be used against you. And I send in my paperwork. Now, if they come back and say something different, they're going to give me, okay, I told you anything you said can or will be. This is what it says. See, it doesn't say I have to do anything. Why? I can't do what I can't do. See? Now, I'm giving you all this great information. Okay, I'm going to ask for 500. What is your next question going to be? 500 what? Okay, I want 500 moon rocks. See, that's impossible. I'm asking for something that doesn't exist. That's what they're doing. They're asking for the notice of deficiency. It doesn't exist. You can't ask for something that doesn't exist. You can't. So I want 500 moon rocks. If you don't give them to me, I'm not doing this anymore. Well, we can't. I'm asking for something that doesn't exist. See, what they're saying is we want this case dismissed because it doesn't say that. It says this. Go back and tell them. No, here it is again. See Exhibit A, highlighted for your convenience. Anything you say can or will be used against you. Your Honor, the attorneys are required to know the law. They're taking the law and they're twisting it and they're lying to this court. Parentheses. That would be perjury. Here's what the commissioner Parentheses, the boss said. See? Now, if you will, look up Title 26, 6212, and, let's, and 6213A. Let's read it. This is on the thing. You gotta, we just got to know what it says. Somebody look up Title 26, 6212, and then somebody look up Title 26, 6213, because the uh, court order says, we we never we never you never they never gave you a notice of deficiency a notice of determination according to sixty two twelve and sixty two thirteen a. Let's read what it says so we get we know what we have then we can use that as our our uh, argument. Does that make sense? Harry, okay. yes, five minutes. <laughs> All right, thanks. We, let's do this pretty quick then. Well, somebody look that up for me. Sixty two twelve, Title twenty six, sixty two twelve, and it's going to tell you right in there what they have to do. They didn't do it. There's your argument. Well, according to 6212, you didn't do this. 6213, you didn't do this. See Exhibit A. That's your court order. The court order highlighted. says you didn't do it. Because you didn't do it, you do not have jurisdiction. See? Will you read it? Yeah, if the secretary determines that there is a deficiency in respect of any tax imposed by subtitles A or B, or chapter 41, 42, 43, 44. Don't worry about that. He is on if the right. there, okay, hold on, Bob. If the secretary, they're telling you in their own paper they didn't do 6212. So it's, that doesn't count. Now go to 6213A and read that one. A or B? A. Okay, hold on. And see, this is what you. This is the. This is the verbiage you need to put in your paperwork. Go ahead. Okay. So sixty-two thirteen A is time for filing petition and restrictions on assessment. Within ninety days. On the, or hold on. Uh, hold on. On the assessment. 
They didn't give you the assessment. They just told you that. Therefore, 6213A doesn't apply. Therefore, they have to rule in your favor. You just use what they're telling you. If you read your court order, it says that they never gave you a, a 6212 or in there because they didn't. It's not statutory. There's why how they didn't give you a statutory. Why? Because it failed 6212 and 6213A. They didn't do it. Therefore, it's not statutory. Therefore, by their own law, it says they have to rule in your favor. So why, why, why does the IRS file a motion for dismissal on the grounds that the IRS has not issued a notice of deficiency in the notice of determination? That because they can't, because, all right, all right, in order for them to do it, there's no such thing as a notice of lien. There is a lien. But see, right. they're doing a notice of lien so they, can, so they can skirt it again. What they're doing is they're doing a notice of deficiency, notice of determination, a notice of lien, or a notice of levy. Then they're monetizing it. They're getting paid. They could care less. If you go downtown, and, and, you, and that's the other thing that we use, I always tell the county, Dear county, I, I have a lien down there. I go pull it, go get it, and I write the letter to the county. Hey, I'm, I'm confused as, a, as a, 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 a bag of hammers here. I don't understand. I can't figure this out. You have a, no, uh, you have a lien against me in the amount of, uh, and here they are. Can you tell me why I got them? They're going to tell you why they got them. Now, I got them. It's not a lien. It's a notice of lien. I had it adjudicated. They didn't do 6212. Now I go back after the county. When I go back after the county, I make it ugly. See, they have two choices. They go to court with me, and I, I'll, then I'll just move in down there. I'll just put my bed down there because I'll own the courthouse. I'll own the office. And the reason for it is because, see, it's not that, that we have to be ugly. We have to be precise and on the target. You get a notice. Why do you get a notice? Because they're not doing 23 C's anymore. In order for them to get a lien, they got to do a 23 C. They don't do them anymore. They're doing notices. So is a notice so, of so deficiency? The other, hmm? Right. So the, so the so, other thing, too, is, is the court ruled that they lack jurisdiction because the IRS never sent notices, and that's what the court says. They tell you that. You know? They never sent notices. Hey, that's your, there's your argument. I never received my notice. Yep. So I want this case dismissed. I want to get paid for it. And see, we right. can take it to the, uh, another court with that argument. The problem we're doing is you're changing your argument. Yeah. Once you change your argument, now you're in trouble because now you're giving them more, pay, you're giving them more things to hang their head on. Does this apply to... Um, Okay, Karen, we're past time. I know one lady has started to say, does this apply to, go ahead and ask me real quick. To just any case, municipal court, we take it up to the tax court, this is all pretty much? Because no. I got, I'm no. getting sued. Oh, okay. For what? This is only tax no, no. court. No. I'm no. getting sued it's for, go ahead, sorry. No. Oh. I'm not, go ahead, I was listening to you, you're getting sued oh, for? Oh, I'm getting sued for um, a divorce, um, but I'm not, I changed it to where I'm not a defendant, uh, because I didn't injure anybody. Um, uh, I'm claim, I'm actually fighting, where's the corpus delecti, and I have not, okay. I have not gotten a response. Um, right. I went that See, route. And then, okay, now, and then I, hold on, one, hang on, let me finish it. You're asking, see, you're going to have to understand, what does uh, divorced collecti, you got to understand what it means, look it up, because that might be a corpus, state. that might be a corpus collecti, that might be a federal qu question. What I'm saying is, you, see, the courts have limited jurisdiction, and they do that on purpose. If you're in the wrong court for one you got ten things, and one of them is a different court. They'll, they won't that you can't win because they won't have jurisdiction. Well, so, they haven't responded. It, correct, they haven't responded since since December. And okay, the, so the what, lawyer, the fault. Uh huh. The lawyer has not 
responded. And even the court clerk said, ma'am, all you have to do is just pretty much write what you want, the dissolution. You already won the case. Well, I didn't record that. I didn't record it. But do I do a, what is it that I do? A summary judgment as to what I want? No, default judgment. Default judgment. Okay. See? Uh, for yeah, default however judgment. Much, okay. However much you want. Wow, that's awesome. Charge See? to no. the bar card for the no. intruder that. It doesn't matter. You want to send an order to the court. Send an order for right. the judge to sign. Right. And and send an order. order. Okay. 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 Um, that's what they want. They're waiting for me. Okay. So a default right. judgment, not a summary. Do, not a summary. No. Do you know? Do you know what? Do you know what, a, do you know what the word motion means? Yes. Yes. Well, motion I want, to move. No. I, I move, move this court. I move the court. Okay. See? I want to I... move the court. <clears throat> and you do it through a motion because that's their, that's their, um, that's their, that's their layout. So you're, you're, you're going to move the court. See, I'm doing a motion to move the court for a default judgment in my favor in the amount of one with nine zeros, whatever, on the ground. Can so I? answered. Exactly, on the grounds they never answered. Correct. Um, okay. He got deported yeah, for did. family violence. That's it. I don't have to explain my case. Yeah. That's right, because he didn't answer. You have nothing to explain. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. <coughs> my pleasure. Now, now, now this, 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 this judge is actually being held in contempt for uh, malpractice. Um, hopefully... I, you know, I asked him for those of office, you know, pretty much everything. See, that's good. You answered my question, and thank you. I appreciate your help. It's my pleasure. Okay, Ed, right. I guess that's it. You want to give them the next time? Now, before, you, before I go, um, I wrote a book that has all this in it. So if you're interested oh. in that, get, uh, get a hold of me, and I'll tell you how to get it. They won't publish I'll it. I'll ask so Mr. Ed. publish it. Yeah, just ask Can Ed, ask? he'll send you to, I don't care what okay. you do, <laughs> just ask Ed and he'll get you to me, but I have all this, all the forms, everything that I'm doing is in the, is in the book, and that way you, you can, you can follow it and highlight it and write in it, and it'll give you a lot of, there's other stuff of course in there too that I, we, we just don't have time to go over, so if you're interested in it, let Ed know, have a get a hold of me and we'll go from there. Okay, okay. sounds good, thank you. Okay, oh, yeah, my next, pleasure. Our next call will be May the 12th. And uh, that's I want to thank 2020 or, tonight. That, yes. Is that 2020 or 2019? I'm going to go with 2020. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Good job. Thank y'all. you all. Thank you all okay. for our time. You spend on this. Love you all. Thank Mark. you. Love you, too. Thanks, Thank Terry. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Everybody stay, stay healthy. <laughs> okay? <laughs>